Hey everybody, it's Pom, and today we're going to be reacting to three creepy true online dating horror stories by Mr. Nightmare. I absolutely love his videos. Um, they're amazing. His narration, his craft, his art is just really, really top tier. It's really good. He is a great storyteller. Like These are so good, and they are these stories that people submit that uh, you know allegedly happen to to them is absolutely ridiculous and i'm excited because i like to get scared so and i have to be creeped out and even more paranoid than i am already <laughs> so yeah um gosh i feel like i had something else to say but i lost my train of thought and now i don't remember what it was uh Yeah, I don't remember. Anyways, <laughs> go check out Mr. Nightmare's channel. I'll be linked in the description. And go check out this video. Like his, check out all the stuff. It's it's really really good. I love it. It's amazing. But uh, without further ado, <laughs> without further ado, let's get into this video. I'm ready. After breaking up with my first girlfriend when I was 21, I had been single for about a year. It was the first time I had been single in years, so it took some getting used to it. Been single all my life. Eventually, I decided Feels it was bad, time man. to get back into the dating scene, so I started downloading a bunch of dating apps. One of the apps I downloaded was OkCupid, which was the one I used the most. I dating apps are not for me. One girl I matched with named Brenna. Based on her interests and biography, she was into a lot of things I was into. She was a very pretty, light-skinned black girl. We had talked for a while and agreed that I would pick her up at her place to go out and get food. I pulled up to her house on the west side of town at 6.30. It was about 10 minutes after sunset, so it was really getting dark. I texted Brenna, and she took a while to answer. I sat in my car actually staring at the conversation for a while, waiting for the texting bubble to come up. Oh, I knew that. When it finally did, she responded saying, Hey, sorry about that. My brother's gonna meet you outside. He's being really annoying and protective. My I brother? How, I was and how much I didn't want to have to meet her brother. But she I just kept saying, sorry, he's forcing me. I understand, but that's so weird for a person you've never met. Kind of and creepy. And the guys came out walking over to the driveway while looking at my car. I got out to go over and meet him, realizing he towered over me. Another thing I quickly noted was his skin was significantly more dark than Brenna's. To the point that they wouldn't even seem related at all. I never know. He shook my hand and introduced himself as Will. There didn't seem to be anything off-putting about him at first glance, and he seemed friendly enough. He started going on about how he just wanted to make sure a trustworthy stand-up guy was about to take out his sister. Understandable. He talked for a little, and he seemed normal enough, I guess. <laughs> he finally asked me normal to enough. meet Brenna. He led me into the house and shut the door behind me. Mm -mm. He told me to wait right there in the living room while he went upstairs to get Brenna. That's bad vibes already. I looked into the living room. I realized there were two men sitting on the couch, both giving me a certain kind of look I just didn't like. Ooh. I said, what's up to them? One of them just slightly nodded his head, but just barely. Will from upstairs called down that he's trying to find Brenna, which was odd. I turned to look at the room adjacent to the living room, which was the dining room my surprise there was another man sitting at the dining room table oh also yeah staring at me yeah time to go instinctively i stepped back and reached for the doorknob without even turning my back to the three men one of them screamed grab him as they <gasps> saw me reach for the door I run, 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 run. The door and ran to my car yeah yeah they weren't far behind in fact i made it into my car with only maybe a second to spare before they were outside my doors kicking and hitting my windows trying to break them i was able to drive away down the block Keep in mind, this was on a public residential road. I have no idea how it didn't cause more of a scene out on the street. I made it home to tell my mom and dad what happened, still out of breath. They were in shock and almost didn't believe it, and they recommended I call the police. Yeah. I reported the house and the incident to the police. One of the neighbors vouched for my story anonymously because they saw the group attacking my car when I escaped. Oh. Police arrested three of the four men I saw in the house. They didn't want to get involved, though. Will, or whatever his real name was. 
the other guy couldn't be found or identified. I didn't stop using dating apps after that. I was just a lot more cautious from there on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, but if you want, okay, first of all, like, if you're meeting someone on a dating app that you've never met before, maybe not meet them at the dead of night at their house. And when you go into their house, you just see a whole bunch of dudes just standing there. Maybe, maybe something's up, you know? Maybe, like, or maybe just don't go into the stranger's house in general that you don't know. And that no one knows where you are or where you're going. Like, if you're going to meet someone on getting app or meet someone online, make sure it's at the dead, like, the sun is high up in the sky and it is in a public area with a whole bunch of other people there. So that way, there, you know, there is a slightly less chance you'll get kidnapped. <laughs> and if that person is not willing to meet you at the dead of, at the, in, you know, in a crowded area in the middle of the day with a ton of people around, then probably... They're trying to kill you now. <laughs> Probably uh, find the next person. Thank you next to them and find somebody else. But yeah, be cautious on any apps. Be aware of everybody in your surroundings and take precautionary steps. However, you should take them that aren't legal, that make certain that you're not like getting catfish or you're not about to get murdered or worse. Okay. time of this story, I had already met a total of three people on Match.com. It didn't really work out with two of them, and the third one I dated for four months. After my breakup, I wanted to take a break from commitment and just find something more casual. And so I'm I sorry, but that's kind of the worst blur. Decently well on the app. You can still see the names. She seemed down to just come over to my apartment and hang out for the night. She showed up about half Nobody an hour look. later and seemed really quiet in person. We hung out in my room in the upstairs of my apartment for most of the night. We just talked for a while while watching TV in the background. There were a bunch of awkward silences, but I did my best to fill them with new conversations. In the back of my mind the whole time I was thinking, are we gonna kiss? Does she expect me to move in for the kiss? How do I go about it? No I idea. Was talking later, I started to realize there was something wrong with this girl. She became increasingly more emotionless. She was staring off across the room as she'd talk slowly, talking about increasingly deep and dark things. Then she said something surprising. She thanked me for allowing her to sleep over. What the fuck? Apparently, no, I did not. Come hang out for the night. She meant to literally stay the night. Ooh, that'd be uh. And asked what blankets she could use for the floor. Oh I hell a couple no! Blankets and pillows, and made a sort of bed for her on the floor. She thanked me and then laid down on her side, facing away from me. I guessed she was ready to go to sleep. That's a yikes. I turned off the TV and closed my eyes. We didn't say a single word to each other, and I have to admit, it was very awkward. Yeah. I fell asleep probably half an hour after shutting the TV, and I awoke randomly in the middle of the night. I sat up and looked down at the floor, and was able to see that Kylie didn't appear to be laying on the floor anymore. I flipped on the lamp and looked around the room. She wasn't anywhere, actually. Oh, you robbed your place, Just then, I heard a voice downstairs. It sounded like it could be Kylie. All the walls in my apartment are paper thin, so noise travels quite easily throughout it. Same in my house. I quietly left my room and stood at the foot of the top of the stairs, listening for what Kylie could be saying. All the lights upstairs were off, but she was talking in a low voice. <sighs> I just couldn't tell for sure what exactly she was saying. I figured she was on the phone with someone, but still, I went downstairs to check. I stepped into the dark kitchen, and there she was. But she wasn't on the phone. She was just creepily sitting in one of the chairs facing the wall. She seemed to still be muttering to herself. I was frozen. All I could say was, Kylie? She turned her head to me slowly, looked at me for a few seconds, then turned back to face the wall. I went upstairs quickly to my room and crawled into my bed to call my dad. 
from the cop cops, call dude. Him three times before he finally picks up, obviously sounding concerned. Time to call the cops. I told him in a quiet panic that some random girl from online was staying the night, and now she was sitting in my kitchen muttering to herself like a crazy person. Maybe she has some kind of mental disability. Hotel, but told me to call 911 if she seemed like she was having some kind of episode to safely get her out of there. Yeah. Then I looked up and noticed a figure standing by my bedroom door in the dark. Ugh. It was Kylie. All I saw was the outline of her skinny body. She stood there for maybe 10 seconds. All I heard was my dad on the other end of the phone saying hello over and over. The next thing I saw was the silhouette of Kylie at my door suddenly charge at me in my bed as she began to scream. <sighs> she lunged at me and put her hands around my throat trying to choke me. However, I was able to quickly overpower her and hold her down against the bed. I screamed at my dad to call the cops. I was able to drag the insane girl downstairs by the time the cops came. The cops took her away to fill out a few documents. What the hell? I think it's safe to say that you should always meet people from websites and apps in a safe, public place first. Well, no duh. Why would you agree for her to stay the night? I am just to say that. Uh, no, the hell you not. Like what? It's Get up and out of here. <laughs> What? However, I've used apps like Tinder or Badoo just for fun for a long time. Have I met some weird? What the hell is the yik yes, yak? But nothing could have prepared me for what happened in February of 2014. Dead of winter, a time of year that these apps are perhaps most useful if you're just looking for casual fun when you can't have fun outside. I was using the app Badoo, and at any given moment, I would be messaging at least five different girls, only because I'd know nine out of ten conversations would end up dying. One conversation kept Leia. going strong, however. The girl's name was Maria. Every time I hear that triple note ding and notification from Badu saying, Maria sent you a new message, I actually get a little excited. I asked if she was down to hang out tonight. She wrote back, yeah, and asked for my address. I gave it to her without hesitation. Ah, people are so right stupid. Back. I said, wait, give me your number so we could text. But she didn't respond. After a few minutes, it said she was offline. The app did that when someone wasn't active for a few minutes. So I figured be back soon. Good job, buddy. Going back You're an idiot. Weekend. Who gives their address to a random stranger? The app to see if she came How back old are these people? She stayed offline. An hour passed, and now it was getting a bit late for her to even come over. Yeah, because she Plus, is a creepy old man time. driving so to your I house right now. Shot. I went to bed. The next morning, I woke up early. It was raining outside, and it was still a little dark. I checked the clock, and it was 6.30 in the morning. I was grateful it wasn't like 11, and I could get back to sleep. I did, however, pick up my phone to check for any new text and junk. I saw a few notifications from Badu, actually. Maria had messaged me a few times. I opened the app as I rubbed my eyes. She said, hey, I'm coming now at like 3 a.m. Then, at like 3.20 a.m., it said, I'm here. At 4 a.m., it said, I'm watching you. I noticed it said she was online, too. And then the triple tone sound beeped, meaning I got a new message from her. It said, how did you sleep? Uh, my heart started to race, and I felt a feeling of unease in my chest and in my head. I right away looked out the window to see if anyone was hiding in the bushes outside. Then I shut the blind. Uh, like, yeah. Who the hell is this? Always sleep with the blinds Ten closed. seconds later, I got the disturbing message. Check your closet and find out. Ooh, no, 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 no. To the closet door that I know was closed last night. The closet door that was now cracked open. <sighs> I was so shook I almost couldn't breathe. Then the door pushed open ever so slowly, revealing the dark inside of the closet. I started screaming for my dad. I had to run past the closet to leave my room. As I got to my dad's room to find the bed empty, I had completely forgotten he wasn't home for the weekend. <laughs> my older brother was home though. Oh, okay, he okay. To see what the commotion was. That's good. That's which good. I told him to check the closet with me. When we checked the closet, there wasn't a single trace of anyone having been in there. Then a cold breeze hit me, and I realized my stupid self didn't lock my window the night before. Things wow. Things made a little more sense now. I went to the police station to show the messages on the app in hopes they could track the person, but apparently it wasn't that easy. 
Yeah, so. We need court orders and such in order for Badu to be required to release the information of the user. I refrain from doing anything. However, luckily after a long week of sleeping in fear, nothing happened. And I was able to move on with my life. the story all these people are kind of stupid just saying like going and meet strangers that you never met before that you don't know at the dead of freaking night giving your address to a random person telling some random person that you've never met before that's acting you know kind of like they have something wrong with them let them just stay the night when you have no idea who they are like no 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 you don't do these things don't do these things do not give your address to random people that you meet online do not do it because that stuff happens to you and this is like there's so many stories of this real stuff also sleep with your bodies closed see my curtains they're always closed at night at night they stay closed sometimes they stay closed at the whole entire day okay keep your blinds closed okay if you don't have blinds Get some curtains. Invest in some curtains. They're not that expensive, okay? Also, always make sure your windows are locked. Why wouldn't you make sure your windows are locked? You don't want people climbing through your windows at the dead of night, all right? Guys, lock your doors, all right? Lock your house, lock your kids. Lock your kids. Had your kids, had your wife, had your kids, had your wife, had your kids, had your wife. Like your dogs, all right? Okay? Like, and also, if you're gonna go meet a person, that you met online, even if it's a stranger. Oh, that's very cute. Wow, first time ever. If you're gonna meet a person uh, at the dead of night, um, I mean, no, actually don't meet the person at the dead of night. What am I saying? If you're gonna meet a person, a stranger that you haven't met before, um, make sure someone else knows where you are or go with a friend or have them like sit a few tables away or just watch from afar or you know someone someone that you trust to make sure this person isn't trying to kidnap you kill you or do other bad things to you all right this is life lessons with sasha okay thank you for participating in my ted talk <laughs> all right um these people are nuts this is that's all i gotta say that's crazy if you guys enjoyed this video leave a like if you wanna and then if you like the video, let me know in the comments down below. If you have any other reaction requests that I should react to, hit me up on my socials or down in the comments. But uh, that's it for this video. I will see you next time. Bye.